what's going on everybody thank you for joining me today if you haven't already please make sure you hit the like button because that's the most important thing you can do for me on this channel what it does that it helps make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get the notifications and it also helps to make sure that this video gets pushed through the youtube algorithm as well secondly if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now please do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends to inform them on this news and information. And yes, that does help to give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the introduction out of the way, let's get into today's news. And today we have to talk about Kamala Harris's CNN interview. I'm sure by now the overwhelming majority of you have seen it and you saw how tragic it was. It was really bad. It was horrible because just like with Joe Biden, we all knew that he wasn't competent enough to run the country that was displayed on the debate stage against Donald Trump. Now, when it comes to Kamala Harris, we all know how horrible she is at articulating her policy points, def defending her past policies, and just keeping up with the lies that she's been given via a script to articulate back to the people. We all know how horrible she is at articulating herself and that continued to be on display in this CNN interview. One of the key things that was focused on was her flip-flopping on so many different policy points. And when she was pressed on it, she didn't really do herself any favors as it pertains to trying to talk around it to convince the people that she actually flipped on these policy points because of good reasons. She didn't do any of that. Instead, she talked around in circles when Dana Bash gave her multiple attempts to clarify herself, she just couldn't and wouldn't do it, which just shows that she's a flip flopper who's following her script and doesn't believe any of the things that she says that she believes in. Now, before we get into what Byron Donalds had to say, because he completely laid waste the entire interview, what I want to do first is get into what Donald Trump had to say concerning Kamala Harris's flip flopping, along with stealing some of his policy points as well, because I find it very humorous. Let's get into this clip first. Closing it. By the way, did you see? So, Kamala was for defunding the police, she was for the open borders, she was for everything that you're not against. I could go through 14 different... She's changed on every single one of them. In fact, I think we should make... See the man in the red hat? And the beautiful woman in the red hat? Says, make America great again. Perhaps we should give Kamala a make America great again hat, right? But the problem is... That's not her belief. And that's so true. But it's funny. At this point, she's flip flopped on so many points. She's now siding with Trump on so many points. She stole so many of Donald Trump's policy points. At this point, you might as well hand Kamala Harris over a red hat that says make America great again and let her join the team with Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr. and the rest of them. That's what you might as well do at this point. But as Trump highlighted also, she doesn't really believe any of this stuff. She doesn't believe any of it. She's just simply following a script. And that's what Byron Donalds is going to break down right now. Let's get into what Byron Donalds had to say. Because like I said, he completely laid to waste the entire interview that Kamala Harris had. Joins us now. Congressman, good morning. Uh, thanks for being here. You know, the Wall Street Journal editorial board, uh, continuing from those quotes we read before, the vice president got away for the most part with repeating her campaign's platitudes. That's a shame because the voters still haven't received a straight answer about whether and how she has changed her views from the far left positions she espoused in 2019. You know, for some voter out there who may want to give Vice President Harris the benefit of the doubt, what do you say to them? I would say don't give her the benefit of the doubt. I watched the interview twice yesterday. Let's be very clear. She hasn't changed her positions, and she said she hasn't changed her values. When it came to the border, she said, well, we should follow the law. I will make sure we do that. But you've been vice president for three and a half years. You're not following border security law. You were in charge, according to Joe Biden and half the media. Why didn't you do that? She had no answer. When it came to fracking, she's saying, no, I don't want to do it anymore. But the Green New Deal, which was embedded in the Inflation Reduction Act, where she was the tie-breaking vote in the United States Senate, that actually winds down fossil fuel 
of production in our country in about 10 years and starts in 10 years and moves forward after that. She didn't have any specifics and Dana Bash gave her an opportunity to provide specifics, but she sidestepped them all. And the reason why is, is because she has the same policy visions and values she had in 2019, but now she has to hide them from the American people. That's why she didn't look confident in her answers. This is why she was looking at the table more than she was looking at the camera or Dana Bash, because I do not believe, and I think if people watch it, they will pretty much see she doesn't believe what she's saying. She's just trying to get elected. That is so 100% true. She does not believe anything that she's saying. She is just trying to get elected. That is all that's going on here. And the other thing that I would agree with him strongly on is that she does not deserve the benefit of the doubt. You are the vice president of the United States. If you can't articulate your policy points at this stage in the game, in a softball interview on CNN, what in the world would make you think that number one, she's telling the truth about anything that she's saying when she opens her mouth, but number two, that she could sit in front or across the table from other strong-willed, strong-minded men like Vladimir Putin and actually negotiate anything without being bullied and backed down. She does not deserve the benefit of the doubt. You were in the United States Senate. You like to brag about how you were the AG and the DA of California and San Francisco. You've now been vice president for what's going on four years now. And this is where we are, where you can't do a sit down interview one on one without your VP pick Tim Wall sitting next to you to carry your water for you, where you're still fumbling in a softball interview, not able to articulate yourself, not able to memorize the script that's been handed to you. She doesn't believe anything that she's saying at all whatsoever. She is just trying to win an election. That's all. Now, what I want to do is hop over to what J.D. Vance had to say, because it really complements what Byron Donalds is speaking to right now and gives a slightly different perspective because J.D. Vance actually stated that he kind of felt bad for her kind of feel bad for a little bit because he sees how badly she's struggling to memorize the script. Remember what Byron Donald just stated, how he articulated how she just seemed so just unfocused, looking around left and right, up and down. Her body language in the interview was horrible, slouched over, speaking so low. It was really bad. And before I even continue on, I just want to let J.D. Vance articulate the points that I was getting ready to articulate on his behalf. I'll let him speak for himself. No point that I just make about how she was trying to explain her changed perspectives is if you actually watched what she was saying, the way that she was saying it, it's clear that she doesn't have very strong convictions. I actually, even though I'm running against her, I felt a little bad for her because mm -hmm. it was clear that she wasn't totally sure footed and she didn't totally know why she was saying the things that she was saying. She's been coached to pretend to be a moderate. Unfortunately, guys, she's governed as a San Francisco liberal and because of it, Americans are poorer, the world is more chaotic, and our border is wide open. We've got to take this country in a new direction, which is why we've got to elect Donald Trump. That is so 100% true. When you go back and watch the interview, or if you just remember it, because you probably watched it maybe one or two times like I did, the way Kamala Harris was articulating herself was the equivalent to a bad actor struggling to memorize his lines. And imagine a bad actor who is struggling to memorize their lines in the middle of an audition, who's bombing the audition, and they know they're bombing the audition. And you could see it written all over their face and all over their body language. That is exactly how the CNN interview with Kamala Harris went. Now, as it pertains to flip-flopping, I want to go into a little bit more detail concerning her position on fracking, something that is huge in the state of Pennsylvania, right? She has been on record, I should say she is on record for saying back in 2019 that she wanted to do away with fracking. But now she's been repeating over and over again that that's not the case anymore and that she has always stated since 2020 that she is for fracking. I want you to see this quick compare and contrast between 2019 and 2024. And then we're going to come back around full circle to the present day in which CNN 
actually fact checked her in real time right after the interview concerning her position on fracking. Let's get into this clip right quick. I'm in favor of banning fracking. You know, the, we. Let me rewind that back just a little bit. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. You know, the, we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. I think about this issue through the lens of my baby nieces, who are one and a half and three years old. And when I look at those babies, and I think about what the world will be like in 20 years if we don't act, I'm really afraid. And as it relates to those Republicans in Congress, where I've now been for two and a half years, every one of those members need to look at the babies, the grandbabies in their life, and then look in the mirror and ask themselves, why have they failed to act? And in 2019, you said, quote, there is no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Fracking, as you know, is a pretty big issue, sure. particularly in your must win state of Pennsylvania. Sure. Do you still want to ban fracking? No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. She's lying. And CNN even called her out on it in real time, right after this uh, interview aired. Right after it aired, they called her out on it in real time. Let's get into that right now. Did her a 2020 presidential run in December 2019. The only debate she participated in in 2020 was the general election debate with then Vice President Mike Pence. And I went over the transcript of that debate tonight. Nowhere in there does she make clear that she had abandoned her previous support for a fracking ban. Rather, she repeated that Joe Biden, the head of the Democratic ticket at the time, mm -hmm. would himself not ban fracking. Maybe other people feel differently. I certainly did not hear anywhere in there uh, Kamala Harris saying that she personally had abandoned her previously expressed 2019 view. Rather, again, she was speaking for Joe Biden. She had never abandoned her 2019 view. And the thing is, is as it pertains to her speaking on behalf of Joe Biden, Concerning Kamala Harris supporters, you can't have it both ways, okay? You can't say that she's divorced from Biden's policies because she was the vice president, and as the vice president, apparently she's just the water boy who's just fetching coffee for Biden, but is completely detached from Biden's policies, yet at the same time, as it pertains to the fracking ordeal and her not actually turning around on it from her 2019 position, you now want to attach her to Biden, who said that he wouldn't abandon fracking. And all she was doing in the debate against Mike Pence was echoing Joe Biden's stance. She never said it was her stance. She was echoing Joe Biden's stance. So you can't have it both ways. Either she's tied to the Biden administration or she isn't tied to the Biden administration. You have to pick one. And the other thing that I'll say lastly in closing is once again, Dana Bash gave her multiple opportunities, multiple opportunities to be able to clarify her stances on her flip-flopping, especially when it came to the fracking question. She asked her, Kamala Harris that is, what new information did you come across? What did you learn? Who were you essentially kind of maybe more or less inspired by that gave you some education on these topics that you flip-flopped on? Kamala couldn't answer the question. You see, so if these positions were genuine, you'd be able to say, you know what? I once was for abandoning fracking and doing away with it. But after I read said information, I came across this or that report. After Biden educated me on this or a couple of progressives like AOC educated me on that or whatever the case may be, that's what led to me changing my position because of X, Y, and Z. If all you did was actually articulate why you changed your mind, the same way other people are able to articulate why they've changed their mind on certain policy points, then the flip-flopping narrative wouldn't stick so hard. But when you're being tossed an alley-oop by a CNN anchor who's saying, hey, what information did you come across that now led you to change your mind on so many different policies. Let's run it down. What reports did you read? Who educated you on this? She couldn't answer the question because she's lying. Like Byron Donald said, 
She's just trying to win election, win an election. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. She's just trying to win an election. And if that's the case, just like Byron Donald said, on no level does she deserve the benefit of the doubt at all whatsoever. This woman's a liar who's just simply reading a script, trying to win an election. And if she gets back in office, I promise you, you will regret it. And with all that being said, that does it for today's news. So please make sure you hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video out on your social media platforms. And also don't forget to follow me on Telegram and Rumble. That is extremely important that you do that. Follow me on Telegram and Rumble at TD Media Group. Both my Telegram and Rumble link will be in the description box below and pinned in the comment section as well. Thank you all for your time and until the next video, peace and have a great afternoon.